Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is an English translation of the Majlis of Hazamana Qamu Zama Sahab Dhamad Barakatuhum, which took place on Monday, the 18th of Zul Hijjah 1443, corresponding with the English date 18th of July 2022. This Majlis took place after the Ishraq Salat at the residence of Hazardwala in Wasiyabad, Ilahabad, UP, India. Hazarwala is speaking about the kitab or the risala that he was going through for the past few days. Asharatu kawaid fi taskiyatin nufus. He goes on then to say that the first qaida was that of tawheed, something which would not even come into our minds. We are thinking about dhikr and muraqaba and muhasaba or whatever it is. The author mentions the first point as that of Tawheed. Wahidullah, fa inna Tawheed ra'asu ta'at. Proclaim the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Tawheed is the most important point of all acts of obedience. If there is no Tawheed, then there is no obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, this kitab also many have uh, acknowledged it and many have uh, liked the discussions that are mentioned in this particular kitab. Now the other kitab that I have now in front of me is the kitab of Ibn Atta Iskandari. It is a difficult kitab written in Arabic and Hazar Haji Saab, when this kitab came across him, he said, Mia Ashraf Ali, that Translate this kitab, Ashraf Ali, translate this kitab, it will be of benefit to people. Nevertheless, when I went to Gujarat and uh, the brother of Mona Sayyid Ahmad Palanpuri, when we were there at his madrasa, so I said to him, quoting the same malfuz of Azhar Haji Saab, where he said, Ashraf Ali, translate this kitab, but by that time, Hazrat Haji Saab was well aware about the capacity and capability that Hazrat Tanvi had that it was then that he asked him to translate that kitab. I emphasized on that point and took it further saying to him and the other Asatis are there that this is the caliber of students that we should produce such that if any work is given to them they are able to accomplish it. Here, Hazrat Tanvi says that I went to Hazrat Haji Saab to go and take benefit and despite my unworthiness then to Hazrat Tan, uh, Haji Saab asked me to do this here so I executed this duty but so amazing and remarkable is this translation that the great teachers of Arabic Adab in Darulum Dioban even remarked regarding this and they said that such a translation Ashraf Ali has carried out that no one could have carried out a translation of this level. In this particular kitab there are subtle points of suluk and tasawuf and there are great uh, deep discussions, nikat, nuktas. One of those nuktas are on the occasion when Musa والسلام, sets out and then he reaches Madian and then he gives water to the flock or uh, to the livestock of Shu'ayb Nevertheless, after he done this year, he did not ask them for any type of reward. He went and he went to go and sit in the shade. Hazrat Anwi has even established from this year that a person unnecessarily should not put himself under difficulty. Ya Musa salatu wasalam, could have sat in the sun, thinking it to be mujahada, etc. Rather, he went and he sat in the shade. So he did not ask them for any reward. Rather, he goes under the tree and he sits there and he says, Oh Allah, I am hungry. Give me some bread to eat. Give me roti to eat. It was the barakat of this year. That Allah Ta'ala made it such that he was blessed with the daughter of Shu'ayb alayhi salatu wasalam, who was a most modest woman. So 
so complete of haya and modesty. And look at the sacrifices of uh, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam and his taharat and his uh, piety. That Allah Ta'ala is saying, and this is Allah Ta'ala's rule. وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا Those who strive in our path, then most definitely we guide them. So, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam's taqwa, the way he looked after his eyes and his heart. And what was the end result of all of this year? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with nubuwat and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with the dunya as well. In Al-Qawlul Jameel, it is mentioned that the Sahaba in their times and in their moments of solitude, they would carry out tasbih. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not looking at the poverty of a person, neither is he looking at the riches of a person, but Allah Ta'ala wants us to do something. Allah Ta'ala wants to see us doing something. Look at Bal'am bin uh, Ba'ura. He was a Zakir, Shaghil. He was a person who carried out the dhikr of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He is a person who was uh, acquainted and affiliated the affinity, closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what was his then end result? Nevertheless, the kitab I have in front of me is a combination of the talim of three saintly people. One was Hazrat Ibn Atta Iskandari rahimahullah. The other one is that Hazrat Haji Saab. And the third is that of Hazrat Tanwi. Hazrat Shaykh al Hadith used to also. Uh, read out this kitab in his majalis. Nevertheless, I was looking or had this kitab in front of me in Makkah Mukarrama. I was going through it, etc. And then we wanted the original source. We wanted the, ori the original source and it was about 2 a.m. in the morning that this kitab was then found in one of the bookshops in Makkah Mukarrama. at tanweer fi isqat tadbir so nevertheless, here today in our discussion, we're speaking about the nafs and the different types of the nafs. Here Allah Ta'ala or the nafs can be distributed into three categories. The nafs can be distributed into three categories, Ammara, Lawama and Mutma'inna. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala does not address any of the nafs aside from the nafs and mutma'inna. The nafs and mutma'inna. And Allah Ta'ala says regarding the nafs ammara, inna nafsa la ammara tum bisu. Allah is not addressing the nafs ammara. The second nafs, wala uqsimu bin nafs lawama. Here also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not address this nafs. وَأَقْبَلَ عَلَىٰ هَذِهِ بِالْخِطَابِ فَقَالَ يَا أَيَّتُهَا النَّفْسُ الْمُطْمَئِنَّ And Allah ta'ala comes about addressing this particular type of nafs saying يَا أَيَّتُهَا النَّفْسُ الْمُطْمَئِنَّ So the first point that we learn is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses this type of nafs and he address, does not address any other type of uh, nafs. Okay, let's continue. You know, a person goes to the rich people and uh, his eye and his ear is attentive and open, he's trying to see that what are they looking uh, for, that they could do it in their presence, due to which happiness can be brought to these rich people and at, they may be called up at certain time or the other. Similarly, people go to the Buzruks and they see 
they watch so that they can also be called at a certain time. Here we learn that we need to take our nafs to that level so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can then address us and call us. Now the second point that we learn here of the nafs mutma'inna, the contented soul, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given it this type of a laqab and a title. And a title in the lughat of the Arabs is actually for uh, respect and honor. And it is a sense of pride for intelligent uh, people. The third point we go to, on to is that Allah Ta'ala praises it by itself being a nafs that is contented. Praising it because it is of its obedience and because of the tawakkul that it has in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. The fourth quality is that this or the fourth point Nukta that we can learn about the nafs mutma'inna is that it is mutma'in. And what is mutma'in? In essence, mutma'in is huwal mun khafidu min al ard. It's that low lying part of land or earth. Falamman khafadat bitawadu'iha wa inkisariha. When it lowers in hum humbles in itself. Athna alayha mawlaha that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then praises it and gives it exposure because of what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had taught us. This is the ta'aleem that we have received from Nabi sallallahu as well. Man tawadu alillah rafa'ahu Allah whoever humbles themselves for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevates them. Hazrat Maulana Shah Wasiullah Sahib used to tell us, Hazrat Wala is saying, that in their student days in Tanavon, there was a very great and senior person, Bari Admi. And it was the Sati of Hazrat Maulana Shah Wasiullah Sahib, and he said to him, that how is it and what is it that I do not find that type of uh, attention from the side of Hazratanvi uh, Rahmatullahi, and he was very worried about it. So when he asked his sati, Hazrat Maulana Shah Wasiullah Sah, then he said it openly and clearly. He said it is greatly possible that Hazrat is frying some type of airs within you. Aapke andar kuch barai paate honge. Some type of is or he's not finding you humble enough. And inna lil ilmi tuhyanun kama lil mal. That with knowledge also comes some type of pride, arrogance, rebelliousness. Like how is the case of that of wealth? Now this is mentioned in Majma'ul Bihar. Hazrat Manan Shah Wasiullah Sahib used to also say وَكَذَا ibada That when a person carries out ibadat, this is also something that comes uh, with it. Iblis also carried out ibadat. But what was his end? What was his end? So nevertheless, Hazrat Manan Shah Wasiullah Sahib said this to his sati. And after that, how he humbled himself. Hazrat Wala is saying, I'm taking this out from the point that we just uh, passed now. That what is mutma'inna? Mutma'inna is the low-lying land. Al-mun khafidu min al-ard. The low-lying land. So here, he then humbled himself and then how and from where to where he reached. Allahu Akbar. The first time Hazrat Wala is saying, just after I just newly got married, it was still the early days, and I went to Hazrat Mawlana Shah Wasiullah Sahib, and I said to him, Hazrat, give me some nasihat. And he said this couplet to me, Har kuja pastis, aab aja rawad. Every low-lying place 
water will reach there. Meaning, if a person has humility and humbleness in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reach him. Now, at that time, they used to fear so much, fear so much, uh, we were so scared, etc. The type, in fact, like that, the only other person that we had so much of fear for was Master Isa, Isa Saab uh, in Allahabad. Nevertheless, let me just go on to the last share that I heard from Hazrat Manana Shah Wasiullah Saab, and that was that Tan Azpaikar Ahmad Bekar Madar that this body has come to do work and for work. Do not leave it without work. Dil Azpaiyar Ahmad. Beyar madar, this heart has come so that it can be uh, a friend or have a friend, meaning Yar Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't keep it without its friend. Let it always be in it, in the heart, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Jisne mitaya apna naam o nishan haft iqleem ka bana sultan That person that has erased his effects His heirs, he humbled himself in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah ta'ala gave such a person a status and a honor So nevertheless, just coming to that point again That He's, he may be finding this type of pride in him. He may be finding this type of airs or highness in you. Not that type of the required humility. That's why you're not finding that attention from him. Allahu Akbar. Another point that we learn of the nafs uh, mutma'inna is irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiya that here we learn there's a subtle indication that there's no permission for the nafs ammara to return to Allah or the nafs lawama to return to Allah. What do we mean by that? The returning of honor. However, bal innama dalika lin nafsil mutma'inna. This returning, the honorable return, is only for the nafs mutma'inna. Li ajli ma hiya alayha minat tuma'nina. Because of the great amount of contentment and peace that it has within himself. Rather, it is said, irji'i ila rabbiki. That return to your rabb. Because فَقَدْ أَبَحْنَا لَكِ الدُّخُولِ إِلَىٰ حَضْرَتِنَا We have given permission that you may enter now in our presence. وَالْخُلُودِ فِي جَنَّتِنَا And that you may have eternity in our gardens of paradise. فَكَانَ فِي ذَلِكَ تَحْرِيدٌ لِلْعَبْدِ عَلَىٰ مَقَامِ تُمَأْنِينَ So in this year, there is the great encouragement for the servant, for the banda to reach the high levels of nafs mutma'inna and no person can reach this year except handing himself over to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, in, in such a high level without any tadbir or putting things into place rather total and complete submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Another point we learn about this nafs is Allah Ta'ala says Irji'i ila rabbiki That return to your Rabb Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala did not say ila Rabb Don't He did not say return to the Rabb Neither did Allah Ta'ala say return to Allah Rather He said ila rabbiki We learn from this Allah Ta'ala is using the words, first of all, number one, Rabb, and number two, your Rabb, because there is Lutf in this. There is care, kindness, affection, and mercy in this, because Allah is the nurturer, Allah is the nourisher. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying return to your Rabb. Meaning not to the wrath of ila qahri ilahiyatihi to your, uh, the, the qahr of your ilah. So fakana dhalika in using these words the istanis there is some type of bringing someone closer and uh, sharing this type of closeness and affinity wa mulatafatun wa takrimun wa mumaddatatun so in this year there is mulatafat there is honor there is love Allahu akbar we also learn from this That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Radiyatan, that you are pleased, Mardiyah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased, here in this dunya, you are pleased with the ahkam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and in the akhirat, you are pleased, Allah ta'ala um, is pleased by rewarding you handsomely. So in all of this year, the banda and the servant is made to understand that returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can never ever be achieved except that we are contented with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are happy in every condition with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if not, then this will not be the case. And we also understand here that a person this being pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or Allah ta'ala being pleased with us, that can never ever be achieved until or unless we are happy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here in this dunya. Hazarwala goes on to speak and quote the incident of a Buzruk, he was going and then he hears the announcer of the king announcing that a certain certain person's wage and his stipend, his uh, amount that he was given every month should be increased because he is mutim and he is farmabardar. He is absolutely obe obedient. Wo nasya farsahe. He has his forehead at the threshold, at the chokat, at the doorstep. All the time, and he is anticipating and just waiting for the order of the king to leave his lips that he will run and execute that duty that's on his shoulders. When he heard this, he falls down unconscious. Hazrat, what's happening? What is the spiritual state that has overtaken you? He says that this is exactly what is happening on that side in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These type of announcements are made in Allah ta'ala's court all the time. That who is the obedient person? Who has his head at the threshold? Who is waiting for the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So this year, this lowly land of we're speaking about the nafs and mutma'inna. We are speaking about this and this is the very first step in this path of suluk and tasawuf. And that is annihilation of the self. Awwalu qadmin lil murid as The first step for the seeker of the truth is that of honesty and sincerity. And honesty and sincerity can be nothing other than fanaiyat and ajizi complete and total annihilation and expression of helplessness in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There was a Buzruk, Sheikh Abu Khair al aqta al tinyati rahimahullah. He made a promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that for rizq and rosy, he would never stretch his hands towards anything. Nevertheless, one day he was going into the gardens or into the open, maybe it could have been the forest or whatever it was, and he stretches his hand to the fruit hanging of the branch of the tree. In all of that, he sees the army personnel rushing, he sees soldiers, and suddenly they take him. He is presented in front of the judge and what were they doing and who were they looking for? They were looking for a thief. They were looking for the criminal. And then the Qazi says, cut his hands. Now look at this. 
That was the promise he made to Allah. The promise was broken and immediately he was taken to task for that. In fact, his hands were amputated and chopped off. People would ask him that what happened here? And he would answer, Yadun janat faqutiat. The hand committed a crime, so therefore it was amputated. He used to do this work of weaving baskets. And in fact, he said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah, what will I do now? How will I earn my rizq and my rosy? Will I go out and beg? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, divine inspiration, that you do whatever work you have to do. We will allow your hands to return to its original form every time you sit to weave your baskets. Allahu Akbar. So this was no ordinary person. Allama Sharani has written about him. Nevertheless, one day someone knocked and he came in quickly, due to which he realized the Sheikh there and he was with his hands weaving his baskets. And because of this, it became shor ho gaya, it became the talk of town. That this, that hey, you know what, we see Hazrat in the open, his hands are amputated. But today I seen him with my own eyes, this karamat and supernatural feet and act became common amongst the people. Allahu Akbar. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also favored him in this manner so that no type of an ilzam and a wrong impression comes upon uh, this uh, buzruk. Hazrat Marana Shah Wasiullah Sahib in his uh, appearance, he was not so waji, uh, not so outstanding, it was quite uh, simple, uh, due to which many people uh, did not even understand who he was, etc. And even in the Khanka in Tanabawan, certain occasions, uh, people would come there and yell at him, reprimand him, etc. And he would tolerate that saying that I've come here for this reason to Hazrat so that I can be reprimanded, etc. And when you people do this here also, I tolerate it. Allahu Akbar. So here we're saying Rabb. You know, in this word Rabb, there is so much of, of lutf and a pleasure that comes out is like a person who calls his mother's name. Ma, Ma. He says that the type of peace that comes by saying that word, calling out your mother's name, that is the amount of peace and lutf that will come about when a person calls the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nevertheless, regarding this very same nafs mutma'inna, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even after nubuwat, he reached the darajat of nubuwat, but he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the maqam of tumaninat. Nafsa mutma'inna, Allahumma inni as'aluka nafsan bika mutma'inna. Oh Allah, I ask you for nafsa mutma'inna. Tu minu bi liqa'ik, wa tarada bi qada'ik, wa taqna'u bi ata'ik. You know, Hazrat Marana Badr Ali, the Shaykh of Hazrat Marana Muhammad Ahmad Sahib, he had four sons. But he used to refer to Hazrat Marana Muhammad Ahmad Sahib saying, Ye mera asli beta hai. This is my uh, genuine son. And so much so, if some things used to come, he would pack it away and wrap it up and keep it aside. And when Moran Muhammad Ahmad Sahib used to come, it was baskets or this or that, he used to say to him, I kept this away from for you, this is for you. Allahu Akbar. And Hazrat Moran Muhammad Ahmad Sahib, how he humbled himself, how he lowered himself, it is absolutely incredible. Such a person of such great stature, and maqam, he humbles himself so much and he used to come and sit like an ordinary student with the people there in front of Hazrat Marana Shah Wasiullah Sahib. And Allah brought then such a day where the great luminaries of the time, Hazrat Marana Ali Miya Sahib, Hazrat Marana Abrar al-Haq Sahib, Hazrat Marana Habib al-Rahman, they used to all come and sit at the feet of Hazrat Marana Muhammad Ahmad Sahib, whereas in the terminology also he was not even an istilahi alim. But when he used to talk, Hazrat Mawlana Habibur Rahman used to say that 
he speaks was bil Quran. His was and his admonition is from Al Quran. He talks. <clears throat> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us closeness and affinity with this path of His. Listen, we have to make an effort for simple, simple things. We have to make an effort here in this dunya. So for this as well. So this suluk and this tasawuf, what is it? It is of islahu zahir wal batin, rectifying and reforming the outward and the inward. So I am saying this here and I am sure there would be no complaint or debate about this. Koi munakasha nahi hoga. That I am adding this here because I mean what the munasabat of the kitab that I have in front of me at Tanweer. So Hazardwala is saying that I will change this a bit and say Tanweer al-Zahir wal batin to put nur to our Zahir as well and to our Batin as well. Now let's make dua. Rabbana la tuzih qulubana ba'da id hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahmah innaka anta al-wahhab. Allahumma a'tini imanan la yartaddu wa yaqeenan laysa ba'dahu kufrun wa rahmatan analu biha sharfa karamatika fi dunya wal akhira ya arhaman rahimin. Now this last part of the dua wa rahmatan analu biha sharfa karamatika fi dunya wal akhira Hazamarana Shah Wasiullah Sahab specifically Specifically told me that make this dua, make this dua, wa rahmatan analu biha sharfa karamatika fi dunya wal akhira. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta al-sameeu al-alim, wa tub alayna innaka anta al-tawabu al-rahim, bi hurmati sayyidin nabiyyil kareem, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.